my spaceship runs on blood, gone sexual. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, look at this dog acting. Is that Joe Exotic? There's one really cool effect I've never seen before. This episode of VFX Artist React is brought to you by Skillshare. Stick around to the end to see how you can get two free months of premium membership. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Visual Effects Artist React. I got some hot clips today for you guys. We're gonna look at Friends. Today we watch Friends and break down our favorite moments. Do you know the monkey in Friends was CG the whole time? <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's hop into it. What's the first video on the docket? Uh-oh, I know what this is. Oh, this is Gladiator. What a good movie. Joaquin Phoenix. Joaquin Phoenix. <laughs> the P is a hard P in Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa. Okay. Wow, that tiger just took a swipe at Russell I mean, that was, that was compositing. Exactly, that was compositing. This is in the era where you don't do this stuff in 3D. You have to get actual footage of tigers and actual footage of your scene and then put the two together somehow. Yeah, this is before Pi's life. Like, the whole background is probably composited too, right? I think above the fence line there. Like, I think yeah. they're actually in an arena, but everything above the railing of the arena might be added in. The compositing looks really good. Yeah, that's pretty good. But I mean, we can tell something's off there. The first yeah. most obvious one is that the contrast doesn't match. Is it less saturated? The sunlight is warmer on the Russell Crowe plate versus the tiger plate. It looks like the lighting is off by like 90 degrees or so. You can see the pillar in the background, the shadow's going away from us, but the light's coming from the back side of the tiger. You can see how the tiger's face shadow is going across yeah. the front of its neck. How do you think they filmed this tiger though? Do you think they filmed them at this exact location from the same camera angle, or did they film it in some other sort of studio? I think they filmed the tigers here, because there's like some really solid like dirt interaction too. But notice the guy in the foreground? That's a fake foreground element right there. So they're trying to, you know, still maintain that kind of like visceral, real filming style. So they just have a very blurry, out of focus shot of the guy's shoulder that it was definitely not filmed at the same time that's just been comped over yeah, the footage. Yeah, yeah. They had to like purposely make the shot worse to make it feel real. This definitely speaks to the issue of when you don't have the same elements on set at the same time. It's cool, it looks pretty real, and especially for when this came out, it's definitely very photo real. But you definitely get a bit of a detachment where the tiger swipes at the guy and the guy doesn't even jump or like hear the sound. It definitely feels like two people filmed at separate times. But visually speaking, because they're all real elements, it still looks pretty realistic, especially for when this came out. Now there's a shot coming up here where it gets a little messy with shutter speeds and motion blur. So a tiger in motion, we have dudes in motion. And then we have a panning camera, but the motion blur doesn't change at all. There's no motion blur in the background, despite the camera's whip panning. Yeah. And the characters in the foreground that are sticking with the camera are still motion blurred. So this shot, the camera's locked off on a tripod. So they punch it in and they add the motion in post, but it really stands out to our eyes that, for example, Russell Crowe's armored kilt right here, it stays in the same spot on the frame, but there's these long motion blurred lines as if it's moving. And it's weird because it shouldn't be motion blurred like that if it's kind of occupying the same space. It would only be motion blurred like that if it's moving that far each frame, and it's not. Meanwhile, that background is whipping across the frame and is crystal clear and crisp. <laughs> I think overall, what they're doing here is a really simple and approachable method for getting a tiger in your shots. It's not that complicated when it comes to the post side of things. <laughs> the filming side of it, however. Yeah. Tigers <laughs> don't do what you ask them to do every time. Blood machines? Blood machines. So there's a song by Carpenter Brute called Turbo Killer, and these guys made a music video for it that people really liked. And they're like, what if we made a movie, but it was half an hour long, and we put it on Kickstarter, and we still made it, and had a bunch of crazy visuals. Well, that's Blood Machines. Dude, that reminds me of the dropship from Halo 1. Yeah, but look it's how cool It's the chomper it ship. Because the ships are kind of living things also in this world. Hence Blood Machines. Hence uh, Blood Machines. Uh. Ah, it all makes <laughs> sense. Dude, the dripping water and everything, bringing the shot to life. Man, look at how much like gritty detail there is. Oh, this like normal ass dude flies this ship. I thought it was like a huge like orc alien dude who's gonna step out. It's like no, it's like this kind of like freaking English postman. Stay back. Hey. These women are other ship cores. We can still heal her. I love the laser effects. How they linger. Yeah, I was about to say, that was, that was pretty sweet. Dude, the glow on her face. Wait, is that real glow or? I think oh, it's yeah. real glow. 
There is one really cool effect that I've never seen before. Probably missed it. Maybe you didn't. So they're giving the impression that this is shot on film. So film, you know, it's an actual chemical reaction. You know, photons come in, hit these like silver crystals. They break down in different ways, and that's how you get your film look. Film is also susceptible to things like X-rays and like various like cosmic rays and things like that. The film itself has artifacts where you can see like particles from this energy weapon have pierced the film and left little trails like the kind you see from like particle colliders. It almost looks like hair got left on a film when it got scanned in. It's about mimicking the process of having to actually have filmed this object. I, I noticed that. I didn't think about the chemistry element behind it, but maybe they took some radioactive stuff and shot it at film for plates. Wow, this is such a bizarre movie. You, you think this is bizarre? Wait, is it about to get more bizarre? This movie is very French. That's the best way I can describe it. So what, what are we about to see, Nico? It's time to perform a dark ritual. Is that the spaceship's spirit? I think it is. It's like crawling along the surface. It's the Matrix bug effect. It's the beetle from the mummy effect. That must just be a fun displacement map trick, right? Yeah, it's almost like you have to like render it once and then just uh -oh. like map it and displacement map it. Oh boy, it's gonna get sexual now. Yeah, that's what I thought. All right. I told you this is very French. We're calling this my spaceship runs on blood, parentheses, gone sexual. <laughs> <laughs> this is how spaceships are made, kids. Blood machines. There's the actual intro. 15 minutes into the <laughs> into the movie, the title finally shows up. Wow. It, this is what it looks like when you're on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> this, this, is, this is what happens when you pay for the fastest internet. <laughs> Dude, the, like the way they handle the color processing is so cool. It's so well done. There's some incredible visuals in that film. Yeah, this is on Shutter. If you guys want to check it out. We are so close to 4 million subscribers, so please subscribe. And if you're the lucky 4 million subscriber, we will actually hand deliver the deed to our whole studio to you. Along with everything we own will belong to you if you're a 4 million subscriber. So please subscribe. Thank you. Love you. We stand for something. And today I watched in shame as all that was betrayed. Wait, are those animals talking? This movie came out in 1995. And these are talking dogs. This is the most realistic CG dog I've ever seen. George Miller, the man who made Babe, made Mad Max. Then he followed up with Babe 2, Pig in the City, followed by Happy Feet, followed by Happy Feet 2, followed by Mad Max Fury Road. <laughs> Are you all right? Well, I wouldn't call that a bite myself. So wasn't this where they, they basically, it's, it, they're real animals, but they're just doing uh, like jaw replacements, right? No, that's a puppet. That's a puppet. Yeah, that's a puppet sheep. So is that pig a puppet? That's a puppet for sure. <laughs> so how do you make an animal talk? Well, obviously you can do puppets. You can make them chew peanut butter, which is how they make horses talk pretty often. But in this case, they did a technique that's really, really straightforward and it's used all the time in filmmaking these days. So they made a 3D model and they tracked it to the animal's head by hand. By hand. Saying, that's all manual tracking. I know, yeah. there's like no tracking markers on this stuff. Yeah, so something in the computer is just like kind of trying to keep it all tracked to the head frame by frame doing it by hand. Yeah. And they basically took that image from the film of the animal and they projected it onto the 3D model. And then they could move that 3D model and therefore distort the animal's face. The catch, however, is that the animals are opening their mouths. So the inside of the mouth is actually a 3D model being revealed as, you know, the piece move around. The other tricky thing is the dogs are usually going like this <laughs> and not, you know, keeping their mouths shut because that's their dogs. That's how they work. So they have to paint out the tongue. That, or like when the, when the head's sideways and it opens its mouth, they have to paint in the background because it reveals the background. You know, oh otherwise the dog's head would be blocking what it. What kind of tools were they using for that way back then? Janky ass <laughs> software they're using. Oh my God. <laughs> you can see the painted out background right here. So you can see the original shot of the pig like moving its head. And you can see the spot where they had to reconstruct the background because when the pig opens its mouth, you'll see the background through it. So they're literally tracking the oh, plates yeah. of the people and stuff through that. Dude, you know what? That's so crazy. That movie came out like, what, 26, 27 years ago? And that's the exact same method we use today to paint stuff back in. Still doing the exact same thing. This whole movie is animals talking. I don't think a human could have done this.
Yeah. Well, because like I was making the point in that video talking about Call of the Wild about like the dog having this expressive like determination and whatnot. But the scene between the two dogs in this movie, I was seeing real acting between those two dogs. And that's probably because they're actually acting with their eyes digitally. I don't know. It worked for me here. I heard that with Call of the Wild that Harrison Ford refused to leave Los Angeles. And I also imagine that had something to play with the animal, like with it being a dog, he probably wouldn't have sat there and done all the takes over and over to be with the dog. Part of me thinks that when you are sacrificing your locations, you can't go to Alaska, you can't film with real dogs, all for an actor, the actor's ruining your movie. It's like they're not serving the film, the film's serving the interests of an actor. Yeah, but people will go see a movie with Harrison Ford in it. Uh, I don't think anyone saw it. <laughs> Insert <laughs> famous actor, I'm just saying. Chris Hemsworth, yeah. there we go. Call of the Wild featuring Thor. So this, this whole image mapping and face warping thing has been used in other films. Let's take a look at Where the Wild Things oh, Are. Oh, I never saw this movie. You never saw it? This I've is a really good it. movie, actually. Yeah, I missed it. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know anything. But I do like sleeping in a real pile. I mean, this looks really good. Man, like the light and the fur and... It doesn't look CG at all. Well, those aren't full CG monsters, are they? No. They look like costumes. They are. They look like mascots. They're emoting like real people do. They're really but creepy But Nico, looking. Nico, do the pores stretch. They do, actually. <laughs> to do it all practically, you get these amazing shots, amazing cinematography, the acting's so much easier, but you have these facial expressions now that you gotta deal with. And so they're just doing the same thing they did in Babe, where they 3D track, basically, the monster's face that's recreated in, in CG, and then a 3D model, and they project but they capture it on film back onto that 3D model, and then you can move that 3D model to distort the image. So, like, the eyes there. I think his whole face there is CG. Including his, like, the hair on the top of his head? Oh, like no, on the, the top face? of his head, that's real, for so sure. So you're saying it's like, it's a real practical head, and just the face right here is being replaced. Yes. You know, the bird guy, for example, just readjusting the edges of the beak and the eyes. Like, it's so much cheaper and easier to film it, and then just, like, you know, do a little tweak on the expression, and you don't have to re-render anything, you don't have to, like, do a full-on relight, you don't have to, like, match stuff. It's just a little image distortion, and you call it a day. Well, there's a lot of implicit value in having like a real practical costume like that on set. On the one hand, it gives everyone a shared sense of what we're seeing. It gives the cinematographer a better idea of how to frame up the shot and get the best lighting possible for that costume. And you can come up with new shots on the spot. But the shot of the, the bird guy carrying the rocks right there, there's no CG in that shot. And that's a shot, like, you, know, you don't have to worry about doing any face remapping. That's a shot you can just pick up. Like You can just get it. And it doesn't cost you any extra money outside of the, you know, the extra couple of minutes it takes you to get the shot. Contrast that with how this movie would be made today. They would probably be full CG monsters. I, I almost guarantee they'd probably look just as good as they do here, but it would require so much more effort in my opinion. And there's a big risk that they probably wouldn't look good. Yeah. Well, even if they looked good, it doesn't matter because it starts to get to this point where you look at it and you're like, it's all CG. It would become Call of the Wild. Yeah, Whereas you watch yeah. this and it's like, this is very plausible, you know? There's stories and there's movies where it's okay for VFX to look like CG, where it's like, I'm basically just watching a fancy cartoon. but. When you can make it look completely real, it's a magic trick and it takes you to another place. It wows you. You can't take your eyes off the screen. In a movie like this, it's just, it's so mind blowing to just have it be real and to see it be real right in front of you. Even if it is CG and you can't tell, it just looks so good. Where's the line between having to do it in CG versus being able to do it? Because I feel like most filmmakers agree with us in that like doing it this way is the superior way. Now what if these were the Incredible Hulk? <laughs> Where the Incredible Hulks are. <laughs> well, I think what you're saying is you were gonna give a script. A young boy travels to an island filled with Incredible Hulks. How do you do this practically? Is there a way to do it practically? And I say, no, there isn't. Unless your Hulk is like a reasonable size, it's like, no, yeah, obviously you're writing something that's not possible to do. Your imagination is boundless, but filmmaking is not. That's very poetic. Yeah. Let's take a moment here and let's talk about learning. In particular, let's talk about Skillshare, which is the sponsor of today's VFX Artist React video. 2020 so far has been a little crazy. A lot of us have been spending a lot of time isolated. And what better time than when you are spending time alone to try to pick up a new skill, to try to pick up a new talent, to invest yourself in some education. So Skillshare is a website that fosters an academic community where professionals are making lessons and videos to teach you a new skill, whether it's something like motion graphics and animation to music mixing and music engineering. There's a whole lot of great stuff there. I myself am a fan of a certain guy named Jordi Vandepoot. He's a crazy filmmaker who knows all about Adobe Premiere. He knows all the details, like he knows 
every single feature that that program has. It's been actually kind of an eye-opener uh, to learn some things that I didn't know about. Another great thing about Skillshare is the, the lesson structure is built in a way where things are broken up into kind of bite-sized chunks, so you're not sitting there for three hours trying to slog your way through a class. It's structured for you to work with it on your own time. Very convenient. Skillshare is also very affordable. If you subscribe for an annual membership, it's less than $10 a month. So if you would like to invest some time in yourself and develop some new skills, down in the description below is a link to Skillshare. And if you click on that, you will get two free months of premium memberships. So it's definitely worth checking out, spend some time bettering your skills, honing your edge against the competition. So go check it out. Thank you so much for watching these videos. We love going through this footage and breaking stuff down like this. And just the fact that you are here watching this and find this interesting, well, it's, it's the best thing. We're so happy you are watching this show right now. So don't forget to check us out again next Saturday where we will return with even more clips.